Today, we will explore the various types of generative AI. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how we classify these incredible AI systems and what makes each type unique. Let's start with a quick recap. Remember, generative AI is a subset of artificial intelligence that can create new, original content. Unlike conventional AI, which primarily analyzes and makes decisions based on existing data, generative AI can produce something entirely new, be it text, images, music, or even 3D models. Now, let's explore the different ways we can classify generative AI systems. Classification by task output. The first and perhaps most intuitive way to categorize generative AI is by the type of content it produces. Let's break this down. Text generation. These AI models, like GPT-3 and its successors, can produce human-like text. They're used for everything from creative writing to generating code. Image generation. AI models like DAL-E, Mid-Journey, and Stable Diffusion fall into this category. They can create stunning, realistic images from text descriptions. Audio generation. These AI systems can create music, generate realistic speech, or even mimic specific voices. They're revolutionizing the music industry, audiobook production, and even helping people with speech impairments. Video generation. While still in its early stages, video generating AI is making rapid progress. These models can create short video clips, animate still images, or even generate entire scenes from text descriptions. Three-dimensional model generation. These AI systems can create three-dimensional models from descriptions or two-dimensional images. They're particularly useful in fields like game development, product design, and virtual reality. Each of these types of generative AI opens up new possibilities for creativity and innovation. Classification by architecture. The architecture of a generative AI system refers to its underlying structure and the mathematical principles it uses to generate content. Here are some of the main types. Transformer-based models. Transformers have revolutionized the field of AI, especially in natural language processing. Models like GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer, use this architecture. Transformers are excellent at understanding context and generating coherent long-form content. Generative Adversarial Networks, or JANs, consist of two neural networks, a generator and a discriminator, that are trained together. The generator creates content, while the discriminator tries to distinguish between real and generated content. This adversarial process leads to incredibly realistic outputs, especially in image generation. Variational autoencoders, or VAEs, are great at learning compact representations of data. They're particularly useful for tasks like image generation and manipulation. VAEs can generate new content by sampling from the learned representation. Diffusion models are a class of generative models that learn to generate data by reversing a diffusion process. In this process, data is gradually corrupted with noise and the model learns to reverse this corruption step by step. This allows the model to generate high quality samples from random noise. They are particularly effective in generating images and have been used in various applications such as image synthesis, in painting, super resolution, and more. Classification by learning approach. Another way to categorize generative AI is by how they learn. This classification is important because it affects how the AI is trained and what kind of data it needs. Supervised generative AI. These models learn from labeled data sets. For example, an image generation AI might be trained on a data set of images and their corresponding descriptions. While this approach can lead to very accurate outputs, it requires a lot of labeled data, which can be expensive and time-consuming to create. Unsupervised generative AI. These models learn patterns from unlabeled data. They're great at discovering hidden structures in data without explicit guidance. JANs often use unsupervised learning, allowing them to generate realistic outputs without needing labeled datasets. Semi-supervised generative AI. This approach combines both labeled and unlabeled data. 
It's a powerful method that can leverage the benefits of both supervised and unsupervised learning, often resulting in models that perform well even with limited labeled data. The learning approach affects not only how the AI is trained, but also what kind of tasks it's best suited for and how much data it needs to perform well. Classification by modality. Modality refers to the type of data the AI works with. This classification is becoming increasingly important as AI systems become more versatile. Unimodal Generative AI. These systems work with a single type of data, such as text-only or image-only generators. They're often highly specialized and can produce excellent results within their domain. Multimodal Generative AI. These more complex systems can work with multiple types of data. For example, a multimodal AI might be able to generate an image from a text description or create a text description of an image. These systems are exciting because they can bridge different types of media, opening up new creative possibilities. Multimodal systems are a hot area of research right now as they promise to create more versatile and powerful AI tools. Open Source versus Closed Source Generative AI Another important way to classify generative AI is by its accessibility and development model. This classification has significant implications for how these AIs are developed, used, and regulated. Open source models have their code and often their training data publicly available. Anyone can examine, modify, and use these models. Examples include models like Meta's Llama and Stable Diffusion. Advantages of open source models. Transparency. Researchers can study and improve the models. Accessibility. Developers can use and adapt these models for various applications. Community development. Many people can contribute to improving the model. Disadvantages. Potential misuse. Open access means these models could be used for harmful purposes. Less control. It's harder to regulate how these models are used. Closed source generative AI. These are proprietary models developed by companies or organizations. The code and training data are not publicly available. Examples include GPT-3 and DALL-E-2. Advantages of closed source models. Control. The developers can better manage how the model is used. Commercialization. Companies can profit from their investment in AI development. Potentially reduced risk. It may be easier to prevent misuse of these models. Disadvantages. Less transparency. It's harder for the public to understand how these models work. Limited accessibility. Not everyone can use or adapt these models freely. The debate between open and closed source AI is ongoing, with valid arguments on both sides. It's likely we'll continue to see both types coexist, serving different needs and use cases. Future directions. The field of generative AI is evolving rapidly. Here are some exciting directions for the future. More powerful multimodal models. We're likely to see AI systems that can work seamlessly across different types of data, creating more versatile and powerful tools. Improved control and customization. Future generative AI might allow for more fine-grained control over outputs, allowing users to specify exactly what they want. Energy efficient models. As concerns about the environmental impact of AI grow, we'll likely see more research into creating powerful but energy efficient AI models. AI human collaboration.